here what's going on everybody um here with another like character discussion video go ahead and tell them who you are um uh, my name is communist lizard i'm from the i'm like one of the mods from the discord and and yeah i mean so we're here today to talk about the return of the prince pokemon master ja wagner is he your favorite character in the series yeah uh, like by far he's probably my favorite character in the series Okay, and and generally speaking, why would you say he's your favorite character? Uh, there's multiple reasons. Like one of them is I just like characters that have high potential. That's like why one of my favorite characters in One Piece is Kobe. I like okay. his per yeah. Keep going. I like his personality, like his charisma, how he acts, and everything about him. His storylines are interesting to me. It's everything about him I like. Um, would you say there was a like a moment? moments or whatever the case may be a scene that made you go okay like yeah he's the one like this is my favorite character i think it was after our crafter died and he was in that room and he started breaking down and we've seen like all the shit that happened to him that yeah. really solidified him for me because like seeing a struggle is like torment that this was a powerful moment for me i i would say like one of the defining moments for me where i'm like okay i like this guy like he's not one of my favorite characters Plus, I gotta pick a side. I side with Karaka. Wrong but, uh, side. No, nah, it's a it's a gold side. But uh, <laughs> um, is when is with with the death of Nia Nia and whatnot, and the fact that he had like the strength of character to kind of break the cycle of violence by forgiving Lurker. Yeah, that was, of, like that was to me was like a defining moment for his character, in my opinion. Yeah, that was a powerful moment because like you could have taken the easy route out and just made it so that like. You could have just killed uh, uh, Kim a Lurker right there and just kept the cycle. But he was smart enough and he had the like strength to forgive him, which you really don't see. Yeah, it's really hard. And like a lot of the times you don't want the character to do that. You want them to kind of, you know, just get revenge. But he took he took he took the the bet the, like I guess the moral high ground and then it, it kind of impressed Bam in a sense too. Because even like later on Viole asked him why did you forgive him? kind of thing yeah you know that's, i like that scene a lot yeah that was a really good scene for him uh um what do you think about his design like his design uh the design is really good i love the horns on the side i like the I, like you know, his design I, I wouldn't say like his face is pretty normal but like the whole golden hair is good his mm -hmm. yeah everything just, i just like the design a lot yeah he got a he, I did like the horns in the back of it's like back of his head at the usually years. I didn't notice you know I didn't even notice it the first time. The first yeah. time I read first time I read this series, I never noticed he had those. The same way I never knew when Dorsey had the little horn on the top of her hair, I never noticed it until like later. Yeah, yeah, I never noticed in Dorsey, but like the wagoning thing was like I seen it like thing and that piqued my interest a little. But he, but he was a character that I had to reread the series to like to like more. Like on my first read, I probably didn't pay him much mind. Um Aside for his little Pokemon gimmick, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I, like, upon upon like multiple reviews, that's when I kind of started to get into him and like him more. Yeah, but, like, um, go ahead. yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Like, I, I loved him from the first reread, but reading it, rereading it more and reading the blogs made him love me more. Uh, made me love him more a lot. Mm -hmm. Because he's he's supposedly one of the central, one of the main um, protagonists of the series. Uh, do you feel do you feel that he's been presented that way? Uh, in the beginning of the series, yes. Through the blog post, yes. But now, currently, not not really. Because he's been shafted for like four arcs already. Yeah, because you kind of you kind of get the idea that obviously the return of the prince and him, you know, aspiring to be the king of the tower kind of thing. That's tying back to you know the whole the literal title of the second season. So you would want to see him a bit more. Do you think you see him enough? 
<laughs> uh, I mean, in the beginning, I think like it was perfect, like the amount of scene. But like now, it, we really haven't seen like the past few arcs. You've seen like pop in once or twice, mm-hmm. and then just like I think, yeah, it, it wasn't a proper showcasing for his season, like the Return of the Prince. Yeah. Wasn't properly fully shown. Um. So, basically, take me back to the the very first time we're kind of reading the series. And you meet this character. Um, I believe it's the twentieth floor. Uh, I don't remember if you meet him before the test. Oh no, I think he failed. It gets burned or whatever. I think that's yeah. what happened. Um, what were your initial impressions of the character at that moment? Do you think you were gonna like him? Do you think he was gonna be important? Like, what did you think of him the first time you saw him? When I first saw him, I was in tr- like I was in tr- because like the first sign I think he said was I'm gonna be a prince. Like I'm gonna be the king of the tower. Mm-hmm. And now I thought this is gonna be a character I'm gonna really be like interested in, and then yeah, and then as I went on, I just loved him more and more, and he became my favorite character. Um, who was your favorite character before him, like from the first season, since he had to came in season two? I think it would be Hatsu. I, okay. I'd, yeah. All right. Um. So he, he, I think he has a lot of a lot of good moments, um, in the series, like. Kind of run me through some of your favorite moments of White Man like in general. Uh, uh, like him uh, going to VO and telling him to be like, uh, he said the speech, like, you're an evil person, but you're not the worst person out there. Help me defeat the evil people. I think that was a really powerful moment. Oh, when he, when he went to interrupt the test with Mule Love and stuff? Yeah. Don't go, Mule Love. <laughs> oh, yeah. The strongest yeah. in the tower? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, I mean, am I lying? I have, uh, I have all the evidence. Water to the Yopa. Uh, he's a close second, you know? Close second. Yeah, that massive, is. Massive growth can't handle. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch it. Um, yeah, that was a good moment. I like that moment a lot just because he kind of was. It kind of, it kind of makes me think that he was willing to do anything to get the job done. But even when the moment came, he didn't, he didn't kill Lurker, which is part of the reason why I think that moment is very powerful. And that moment with Nia Nia was like really sad. Like, you know, when he's eating the noodles and he starts like crying. Damn. Yeah, that, that is really sad. Yeah, that was, oh, that was it. So, okay. So obviously I, the character gets a lot of flack. I give him a lot of shit because yeah. he's fucking weak. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> He's fucking weak. Uh, he has a little Pokemon gimmick. That's cool, I guess. But um, I mean, before we get into like what you might hope to see from him in terms of um, strength, like what do you think of his arsenal right now? Uh, I think it needs improving. Like the antimatter Shinsu bombs are really interesting, the bombs. But I, I don't know if they're gonna cut it in the higher floors now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like we know he 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 heals pretty quickly. He seems to have like. A high yeah. healing factor in a sense. Yeah, that's. You think that'll be explained soon? What do you think it is? Or anything? I think it's gonna be part of Zahard's immortality. Like, yeah, since he's the quote unquote the son of Zahard or like the prince of Zahard, mm-hmm. he probably think probably uh, inherited it from Zahard, which is like a thing. Because I think the one of the best feats Wagner has in the series is getting stabbed in the heart and yeah, recovering in a day. Yeah. Probably, yeah, he did this. He just keeps on trucking. Like his vitality is pretty insane for somebody. For somebody, I guess you could say, so weak. He's yeah. he has pretty uh pretty great vitality. Um, shit, I had, I had something I wanted to say too. Okay, yeah. So like concerning his like identity and whatnot, right? Um, what do you? What is your your take on it? What's your theory on it? People, I don't even say he's a clone or a son and this and that. But you know he's one of the Jihad and the Ten Great Family's biggest mistake. But what do you think? What do you think it is? Uh, I think it's the son of Jihad. It's pretty basic, but I just think he's the son. Because there's, there's been a lot of hints, like him saying that you're the Prince of Jihad. They're being blog posts and saying they're waiting for this Prince of Jihad to show up. Just everything points to them being the son. Mm-hmm. So you think he's like just legitimately his like biological son? Yeah, I think he's his biological son, but yeah. Interesting. I don't even know what I think at this point. I've heard so many theories at this point, I just, I just wait to see what I get. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know what I think. I'm not against that. I'm, I'm not against the clone thing. You know, um, his connection with Karaka seems to be really interesting too. I mean, what are your thoughts on their relationship or possible relationship going forward? Like, I've been saying this a lot. I, I still think that Karaka's going to train Wagman. I think... 
like as we got this thing, their connection, their like relationship, the, the relationship is gonna grow stronger. Because like you can see from <laughs> the previous chapter, Croc was acting like a sendere to uh, about Wagner and being like, I, I don't like him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I feel like the relationship is gonna grow stronger, and, and yeah, I, I just can't wait to see more of the interactions. Yeah, um, that wasn't that was another like kind of moment where I'm like, oh, this guy definitely going to be important because Karaka really got mad. Like, yo, what? Where? And he's like, yo, my brother is alive. And I'm like, wait, that's kind of crazy. Like this, this yellow haired Pokemon trainer, he might, he might have a lot more to offer than you would you initially, you initially think. Yeah. Um, in that regard. I just wanted to say that I completely lost my train of thought, but <laughs> uh, I had it too. But anyways, I mean, I mean, guess keep walking me through more moments that he that he had. I, I actually do like his moment on the hell train when when Rachel pulled up. Yeah, I thought, thought he had a decent showing there. That is like uh, I'd say another moment was like when he got stabbed in the heart, but we go back to it quickly. Like him, the one he gets stabbed and then he drags himself up and saves it. That was just like, like really nice to see. It's like him dead and basically dead, but still wanting to help his friends out. That was a nice moment for me. Mm -hmm. He's actually really funny too, by the way. He's funny, so. Yeah, like Yewa and Wagonin's interactions are like some of the funniest things in Tower God for me. You think we're ever going to see the Red Light District where he came from? Yeah. I uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be an important art because like Seal said it multiple times. It's like the the rings are important, wagon is important, and then since he's like the prince of the red light district, I think you'd have to at least give a flashback or something about it. Mm -hmm. Need to see them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see that that red light district for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to go there too, and uh. What they have to offer but um okay so generally speaking what would you say is one of the biggest misunderstandings about the character like that uh, mm, uh i could say that probably like some people just some people think that he's gonna be a lot cooler in the future and like he's gonna turn into somebody that's like a like a bad guy like he's a hard but like considering Wagner's personality, he's just like to me he's like uh, Bam in the sense that they both want to protect their friends, just a Wagner can't. But I still don't think Wagner's gonna be the kind of person that would like turn evil. Mm, yeah, yeah. I remember we had that conversation a couple times in the streams way back, where I think Simi thought that he's gonna take the soul edge and become like <laughs> turn on them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't see this personality. I don't see it. I don't think he's gonna turn evil at any given point. Yeah, like that's because Wagon to me just just like yeah, he's just too nice of a person. Like uh, yeah, like, where is Because like even you said in a blog that Wagon is a character that's sensitive to death and pain to all the people around him. Like yeah. that's that's probably why he cried when Jin Sung was captured. He just he gets hurt when people oh he cries and other people get hurt. So I just don't see him like you know. Pretty evil. But I mean, as 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 like not like um like they still had a connection in a sense. Like obviously they don't have like a real long lasting bond, but they've had conversations. He was able to kind of convince him to like let Viola climb with them. Plus he gave him the lollipop and told him to stop smoking kind of thing. So it's like he still knew Jin Sung at the very least. So his his tears weren't like random. So I actually like that he was crying for Jin Sung too. To me, it's like uh, the Straw Hats and um, Ace like. They, they were crying for Ace, but they're also crying because Luffy was hurting. To me, that's the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Um, how do you, what do you, so, like, the one thing about Wagner that struck, strikes me as weird, despite, like, what we could think we think about him, is I don't think he's, he's, he's ever really shown much potential in the same way, like, you know, Bam's a genius. He gets everything, uh, you know, or, like, whatever. Like, he kind of seems really regular <laughs> for somebody... Of his bloodline, so at least, so like, what do you expect to see from the character at the very least in the com in the, in the combat sense? What, or what do you what would you like to see from him? Uh, like speaking of potential, I think like the sword is in one reason. Like I think his potential is locked right now. Like it's like hidden or like unlocked, unlocked inside of him. 
Okay. I think I think the sword will play a role in helping him unlock it. Because if he's actually the center of the hard, he shouldn't be this weak, especially since he's actually blood related. Exactly. Yeah. So, and like in the future, I like him to see him like I want him to be more fisherman like his dad, like more hand to hand. Maybe like you know the sword can maybe start using the sword more. But that's one I want to see. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, now that we're on it, you know, Soul Edge, you know, Excalibur, whatever you want to call it, the talking sword. Um, well, first of all, when you first saw him get it, what did you think? Uh, I, honestly, I'm like, oh shit, Wagner's back finally. And then but, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an interesting way to go because, like, it's like this a talking sword that knows a lot about Wagner and his personality. He even says you're just like. He talks about personality. Somebody who cr- smiles all the time, but it's secretly hurting inside. Mm-hmm. And then, like he says, I can give you the power. And then we also get a shot of like we, it's the hardest talking about fate when he picks it up. Exactly. Like, yeah, you can see all this like all these gears turning when he picks it up. Like it's an important point. Yeah, because the the sword strikes me as something extremely interesting because of when it was presented and and when he's talking about the the uh, the potential not the potential the ability to um to change or mess with fate and then he kind of does that and then remember it said he has to kill somebody yeah that's that's the thing i i still don't think he had time i'm not sure if he knows who he has to kill yet Indeed. but who do you think the sword would want wanted him to kill though like just in your own head kind of bam i'd say probably the most likely then Kraka. but i could also see it being some third like uh, entity we haven't seen yet mm-hmm and then he has to work his way up. But even if it is Bam, I, I'm not even sure if it's Bam anymore because he wasn't acting like suspicious when he was like when he saw Bam. But, Weird um, about it, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. But I'm not sure though. Um, how do you feel about his very his very relationship with the other characters? Like me, like uh, I guess Bam and you know. You, you spoke about Elwa a little bit, you know, Akraptor, Prince, Masang. Like, how do you feel about his relationship with the other characters in the cast? I, I think they have good relationships. Like, even, like, Arkraptor said that Wagnon's the heart of, like, Team Sweet and Sour. Like, the way he interacts with people, the way he, like, he's, like, really open. He can make friends easily. Like, the way he, you know, Quattro Blitz, like, the, uh, the Psychopath, he was easy. Yeah. He's, yeah. And that's another thing about his personality that people don't respect a lot. Like, Wagner is pretty charismatic if you think about it. Like, the whole Quattro Blitz, he had Kuhn. Kuhn was even able to say that he was a good leader. Yeah. You don't, you don't get compliments from Kuhn a lot. Mm. That's true. And, yeah. He's mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kuhn is pretty mean. Like, like if you're not close friends with him, like, he probably will. He's not the kind of person you'd be along with. He's kind of mean. Yeah, he, it's like compliments are pretty scary, but like the fact that he was able to open up to Kuhn, like even like when they had the talk, he talked about, Kuhn talked about the jewel, mm-hmm. that just showed like he's able to make people open up to himself, he's able to, like Wagner's able to do that, able to make people be on his side, just, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, man, um... I don't know about this guy. Like, I just, I just like, I just read. I'm re- like, you know, I always tell you guys like, where's Wagner season? Like, I'm ready. Like, where's that? Like, <laughs> I feel like the focus shifted a lot off of him later on in season two. Like, he he was always there and around. Like, you see him on the hell floor. Like, why is the wreck here? Like, this and that, and the other. But I just felt like he stopped being a, such a major focal point until very recently with the one, the one part with the sword, and then now in the last chapter. You see what he's gonna do like so what do you think he's going to be be doing with like what do you think Karaka told him told him to go first of all uh my head kind of is he told him to like a, like after he drops off me saying oh like go sorry he's gonna go to maybe like your uh Karaka's palace oh maybe not Karaka's palace but like somewhere Karaka stays so, so he can get trained by Karaka because if they're both brothers and they should have like a similar quality like Jin's quality so the best way for them to train, the best way for Kro- Wagner to get stronger would probably be to train with uh, Kroka. But do you think they? But do you think that he has the same amount of like latent potential as Kroka? Because Kroka is like he's uh, even even amongst Slayers he could, as the new one. He's he's heralded as he's heralded as a kind of like a genius amongst the elders and whatnot in in Fug. So, like, uh, 
I like it might be in the Fadden boy, but I think he has equal amount of talent, but he just hasn't been like, like maybe I don't know something in the past, but Wagner's like just talent hasn't been shown yet. So you think, think you think he could close the gap between him and all the other strong characters like eventually or pretty soon? Yeah, I'd say eventually because if he's gonna be like something important, like if he actually wants to be the king of the tower, you, you can't expect it like a, a D rank regular power. Yes, yeah. But what if that sword is just that broken? It just the sword is all the work. <laughs> would, uh, you, would you be okay with that? Nah, I I wanted his power to not be external because I felt like it would be like a glass cannon kind of thing where if he's the sword is super strong, but if he gets hit himself, he's just gonna die. Mm -hmm. Like I. I I, I wouldn't mind him using to be strong, but I just want himself to be strong. Hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel it. So, how do you think the conclusion to this Huar Yang stuff is going to end? Since him and Masang are going to go see if he woke up or whatever. I like, I like personally stop caring about it, but I know you guys still do. So, like, how do you, how do you see it concluding? Um, uh, I see that they're going to like when they go to the when they go down first, they're going to meet you and them. Because they're on the forty-first or forty-second floor, mm. and the, and then they're gonna just pick them up. And then I think I think Hori Yang and Go Seng might stop climbing, because like Mi Seng is at least somewhat strong. Like she has the thing, but Go Seng has nothing going for her. <laughs> She's a mid. I'm sorry. I, I can't even defend her. Good. Don't try. She's not it. And then since Hori Yang is pretty much in love with Gosang, they might just like just, like start living the 30th floor. Yeah, me saying Yewa, Danwa, and Wang and going up there. And then they go to Prokka and the like the Prokka go. Hmm. All right. Um, like I, I got about three more things I gotta ask you. So one is, what do you think is, what do you say is the best thing about Wagner? Uh, whether it's design, character, power, what do you think is the best thing about him? Or your favorite thing about it? I'd say his character, like his personality, and the struggles he goes through. Because, mm -hmm. like, Seuss even said, like, his personality is kind of like a shonen protagonist, and, like, he wants to protect his friends, but, like, he doesn't have the strength to do it, basically. Like, he's suffering all the time. He has all those people that died in front of him, they like, died to him. Because I love, I love seeing that, like, like, especially with Bam there, who has all these powers, and you have somebody. Uh, in Wagner, who wants to protect everybody, but can't. Just, it's just, it's just nice to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Um, I'm trying to think. About, I, I, I guess I'll kind of agree with that. I, I guess to me, like for me, it's just that one moment where I'm like, where like he has a good heart. Like his heart's in the right place. I think he's not an asshole. He's not, you know, he's not Rachel. <laughs> he's not. Uh, <laughs> as much as I love Aguero, he's not a nice person. But I fuck with him. But um, he's got a nice heart. Kind of like Shifu yeah. Lisu, you got they're 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 good people. Yeah, they're good people. So we so often we, I, I spoke with you about this about this and often I I think that like um the way that season two should have end should end is with an epilogue that ties into Wagman. Whether it's kind of showing us what will become, what has already happened with him, maybe you know whatever whatever how he was born or him in the red light district, or whatever. This in the same vein that the epilogue we got. For season one was about Rachel seeing Bam enter the tower and pass that test with Haydon with the steel fish, steel eel fish. I always forget the name, steel eel fish. I think the, yeah, the first chapter, right? So, like, if we get an epilogue about about Wagner, like, what would you like to see in it? Uh, maybe we get like a pass or something about his past, like maybe something about the red light district, some hints about that. Maybe we get uh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Maybe we get like. Like maybe like uh, yeah, I I probably think like the flashback to the red light district or some like some think about his past that could reveal his character a lot. You think we see anything about Karaka in the past Man. in that in that flashback? Uh, I'm not even I'm not sure if they met in the past though, but maybe because yeah, maybe we do though. It would it would be interesting to see the uh, see both of them like in the past maybe like. Maybe before, like, like Wagner forgot about him, and you can see that. The thing about it is that I think, ah, damn, I don't even remember who brought up and brought up in the stream, but like, based on how Karaka said you were running away again, and he quote unquote hadn't really known him that long, he kind of just met him on the L train. 
it's like why would you say that if you haven't seen him run away before it, it almost insinuates that he knows him so do you think he believes that that's his brother or her brother uh, for before, yeah. before, before void shoots him i'm sorry <laughs> uh i think he like i think you can like tell that like maybe he had doubts but then the more he thought about it the more the cock realized that he's probably my brother like you see the face i mean you look at wang and face you can autom- you automatically think of the hard yeah and then this maybe the soul uh, the soul light shouted to Jimmy uh, shouted to Simi. Mm-hmm. That was like also a thing. Like if he sees any, you can tell that like oh this is something powerful. Maybe no uh, uh, crocodile knows that's like a powerful weapon of the heart or something like that. Interesting. And I guess um, lastly is what do you kind of hope to see from him, and where do you think he's gonna end up? Like what do you what were your hopes for the character going going forward? Uh, I want his like, I want him to I want him to say the same personality, maybe like grow a little bit. But, like obviously I want him to be powerful and stuff, but I just don't want him to lose his way as he goes up the car. I don't want him to become his dad like where he's just like really like evil and stuff. I, I just want him to keep the same heart as he goes up the tower. But get stronger. Yeah. So like kind of like the sense where it's like you don't you don't fall to the I guess you could say antics of the tower where it, it could change you and you, you, and you could be willing to do despicable things to climb and get to your goal, but he gets the power and remains himself. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Maybe I'm struggling a little bit, like going through some intense moments, like with Arcraft and like friends, mm-hmm. but that just helps him like grow as a person. And yeah, that's like that's probably what they want to see from Wagner the most. All right, I feel it. I mean, I give the character a lot of flag, but I'm just slandering the slander. I never, I never, I never disliked him. But like I said, I have, this, I got a side to pick. <laughs> I got a side with Croc. A slayer. Wrong side of history. Nah, man, it's the gold side. You think that, you think they look? They, you think they look the same? But uh, it, if they look the same though. And he saw him, and he didn't immediately be like, "That's my brother." With or without the ring, he's trash though. So that's, I mean, one's a girl though. So you're right. I mean, they could look similar-ish. <laughs> what do they call it, fraternal twin, maternal twin? What could they call yeah, it? Like, um, yeah, I, I, they probably look similar, but even then, I was surprised if, if they look similar enough that Crockett doesn't automatically make the connection. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to I gotta get more of that relationship between those two and how they connect to the king, because um Karaka's target is to take out jihad and his and and Wagner wants to be king of the tower so it's like in in a in a sense their goals could align so it would be interesting if they could work together it's so yeah. fascinating yeah if they could if they actually start teaming up that would be nice to see does does Wagner become king of the tower by the end of the series yes or no oh uh, yes the answer is no <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no i don't know it's possible i mean i don't even know if there'll be a king <laughs> by the end of the series they might just you know create democracy <laughs> Who knows? we'll see uh, any, but, but i mean any final comments on on your mans uh wagon the go wagon season coming one day a long-term merchants <laughs> the long hey, like shout out to lads we bought the long-term payoff <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. You, you don't get the immediate gratification, but when it comes, and yeah. you know you've been waiting. It's One day. Much, it's just that much sweeter. Yeah. But All right. Day. Respect Wagner, guys. Y'all here. Cool. Yeah.